This is our world, and whenever we roll it out like this, right in the middle is Africa. And right in the middle of Africa is a little country called Burundi. Burundi is a land of forests, of buildings, and of people. Another country, much further north in Europe, is Sweden. And Sweden is also a country of forests, buildings, and people. But these buildings, people, and forests are different from those in Burundi. One of the ways that they're most different is in life expectancy. What is life expectancy? Well, life expectancy is how long you're expected to live whenever you're born. If you're born in Burundi, you're expected to live this long, 50 years. If you're born in Sweden, you're expected to live this long, which looks like it's a little bit more than 80 years, 81 years. Does that mean that everyone who's born in Burundi is going to die whenever they are 50 years old? No, it doesn't. But what does it mean? Well, let's look at five Burundians whenever they're born, and let's see how their lives, what happens with them during their life. So here are five people, Vanessa, Fanny, Oliver, Eric, and Nadine. And let's see how long each of them lives. Vanessa lives, looks like it's over 70 years, 72 years. Fanny lives a lot less than that, 36. Oliver, Oliver is living, has lived more than Fanny, but less than Vanessa. How old was Oliver whenever he died? Well, he looks like he died after 50, but before 60. 57. Eric. Eric unfortunately died whenever he was a baby, just one year old. And Nadine. Nadine lived to be an old woman. How old? Well, it looks like maybe just above 80. Maybe 84. So here are five typical people in Burundi. How are we going to calculate the average age at death for these five people? We're going to assume that the students do not know how to divide, so they cannot use the formula where they add up all of the ages and divide by the total number of people. What other way is there to do it? Well, we're going to do it in a game. The students, first of all, take a guess. They might guess that the average age at death for these five people is 49. Then they're going to count up the total number of lives lived beyond that line. So here we go. How are we going to calculate that? Well, that's going to be 72 minus 49, 57 minus 49, 84 minus 49. Now we're going to calculate the same for the people who did not live up to 49. So we're going to calculate those years that are not lived. And those are easily calculated, 13 and 48. Now we're going to add up the red numbers and add up the black numbers. The child wins, they've guessed correctly, if those two numbers are going to be the same. So let's see if they're the same. Let's see if this child has won. Okay, so we're going to add those black numbers up and add the red numbers up. Oh, they're not the same. So 49 is an incorrect guess. Now they have to go back and they have to try again. How would you manipulate that line to get a better guess? So this of course 
gives the students practice in addition and subtraction, which is exactly what we want. And uh, the correct answer, which they'll probably get to in a little, with a little bit of effort, is 50. I've included problems at the end of this video and in the PDF files attached uh, for those people who want to experiment with different countries. So as well as Burundi and Sweden, uh, you'll have access to different data sets for different countries. And you can always check the answers of the students by just calculating the average uh, with the, the standard formula. Now let's shuffle the people so that their deaths are in order. We can actually take away their photographs and the important information is still there. We could even do this with 10 times as many people and we would be able to learn a lot more about Burundi. Um, here you can see that there's seven children who have died before their fifth birthday but that's pretty sad but after that there's very few children who die as teenagers. We're now going to go north and check out life expectancy in another country. Let's look at five babies born in Sweden. Sarah, Lisa, Jan, Anton and Per. Sarah lived to a whopping, it looks like more than 90 years old. 93 years old. Lisa. Lisa lived to 77. Jan. Looks like Jan lived to more than 80. He lived to 84 years old. Anton. Anton lived an even longer life. He died at 88. And Pear. Pear died earlier than the others. He died at 63. Again, like we did in Burundi, we can reorganize these people according to their age at death. And we can take out all of the images. And we could, just like we did in Burundi, we could, instead of just gathering data on five people, we could gather data on five or 10 times that number of people. And if we do that, we can see that in Sweden, there are very few children that die in their first five years of life, unlike in Burundi. And that's probably the primary reason that you have such a low life expectancy in Burundi is because so many kids die at such a young, young age, below the age of five. Here's a question. Does everyone in Burundi live 31 years less than everybody in Sweden? No, the answer is no. We, we saw, for example, that Per lived 63 years and Nadine lived 84 years, and yet Nadine was living in Burundi and Per was living in Sweden. Behind the statistics are the lives of real people, and it's good to keep that in mind. Whenever you see data like this, sometimes they don't have pictures attached to them. Most of the time they won't have pictures attached to them, but there's still real people behind those statistics. Much thanks goes to Matthias Lindgren of Gapminder for his work in starting out this presentation. Thank you very much, Matthias. This was a joy to work with you.